All right, everyone, I am in rural Kansas. Here, let me show you where exactly. Uh, you can see I'm a little, what, north and west of Topeka. You can see Omaha up in the north and Kansas City to the east. Uh, I am in a small town called St. Mary's. And it is an interesting place. What I'm going to do is start on the outside of town and drive in. And I'll tell you about it as I do that. The town is mostly populated with traditional Catholics. The Society of St. Pius X set up shop here years ago and uh, traditional Catholics have been flocking to the city. These are Catholics who believe in the old ways. So uh, no birth control, the children are separated in their classes by sex. Um, at this place right here, St. Mary's, uh, St. Mary's Academy and College. They teach grades kindergarten through 12 plus some college classes. But yes, the uh, classes are separated. The girls and the boys do not go to class together. This particular group of Catholics, they don't believe in modern music. Kids are not allowed to listen to it. You know, uh, dressing provocatively like in a bikini is not allowed. Very, very old, old school Catholic. I don't want to call them a cult, but they are not recognized by the Vatican. So the city is a very religious hub. Now the city's numbers, or we better call it a town, the town's numbers are really interesting. The poverty rate is 3.5%. I think that's the lowest I've ever seen. The median household income is 72,100, which is higher than the US average of 67,500, quite a bit higher. The average home here is worth 252,800. That is lower than the average US, but we are in rural Kansas. Um, the median age, that really sticks out. The average age of the person living here is 27.5. Now I read an article about the town, and I'll put that link below, but many of these young couples who believe in the old ways of Catholicism are moving here, and of course they're having huge families because birth control is not allowed. The other st uh, statistic that sticks out is the crime rate. It is 73% lower than the national average. So crime here is very low. I've driven through some of the neighborhoods a little bit, and I'm going to do some more, but um, quite frankly, really beautiful neighborhoods and homes here. Uh, many of the homes have some sort of religious statue in the front. You can see one right here. Anyway, uh, <laughs> interesting place. I'm going to uh, look around and see what else I can see here. I don't think I told you the population of the town yet. It's 2,759. The town has, hasn't lost population in 50 or 60 years. Usually when I drive through these towns that I show you guys, they are losing population. Not this one. Got a little bit of snow here last night in Kansas, northern Kansas. It is 33 degrees right now. It's pretty chilly still. Got a couple inches of snow. Not a big, not a big deal, but it's the first snow I've seen this year. Anyway, I'm going to continue driving around. Uh, the town is kind of perched on these hills. It's real nice. Now I'm just driving down the road, and I came upon this. Wow future home of the Immaculata. That is a massive structure, especially for a small town of 2,700. Look at that. Huh. It's a beautiful building. I'm at one of the historical sites in town. Uh, it is the Potawatomi Indians Pay Station. You know you're in a small town 
when you hear the train. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk around him. Yeah, there it goes, you can see it. All right, man, it's going by really close, isn't it? That makes sense. That makes sense given what this is. Um, it was built in 1855. This is where the U.S. government would would uh, pay Indians, the tribe, whatever they owed them for different things. Now let's see what it says here. An Indian agency for the Potawatomi was established at St. Mary's Mission, 1857, in accordance with the terms of the treaty of 1861. The payment to the Potawatomi was made here on October 29, 1870. Okay, so let's historical site was designated in 1969 as the Potawatomi Pay Station Museum. Yeah, it is on the National Register. It's closed right now. Uh, it's made of brick. Very old building though. Give you a look around the town. Right next to me is the St. Mary's Academy and College. I'm gonna drive in there next, show that to you. All right, I'm driving into St. Mary's Academy and College. Like I said, uh, they teach kindergarten through 12th grade, and then they have some college courses. Impressive looking buildings, especially for a town this small. I don't know if you can see it through the trees. I'll try to get closer. But yeah, it uh, is owned by the St. St. Pius X organization. And uh, these, especially these young couples who move here to raise their kids in this environment, one of the reasons they come here uh, is so they can raise their kids in this school here. Like I said, they are separated by sex. The boys and the girls, they don't go to class together. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that would really bum me out <laughs> if I didn't get to go to class with girls. What can I say? Anyway, I'm going to drive around here and show, the, show you the campus a bit, see what we can see. I'm assuming nobody's going to run me off. Anyway. It's a beautiful, small campus. Let's keep driving down here. Yeah, I can see a little bit, see it a little bit better here. The campus for the various grades of school, I guess. Huh. Really interesting. And they play some football. Yeah, I'm just driving along this campus. Sun's kind of in the wrong place. I'm not sure if you can see that. But this is a really impressive facility. When you consider this is a town of less than 3,000 people. I mean, wow. What do you even say to that? Big money here, you can tell. This group has got a lot of money. Beautiful house there. Um, with the poverty rate of 3.5%, I was wondering, you know, is there a sketchy part of town? Virtually every town you visit has a sketchy part, but I gotta tell you guys, I have driven on every street here and there is not a sketchy part of this town it's kind of surreal um, whether you believe in or agree with the religion or not and according to that article I read there are those here who live in this town who don't agree with it and aren't particularly crazy about it but nonetheless you got to be impressed with the town because um, it is beautiful. 
All right, so we are in Kansas, so you know there must be a the Wizard of Oz town. Well, there is. That's where I'm heading next. It's called Wemego. I'm looking forward to it because I do love that movie. All right, everyone, I am entering Wemego, the Wizard of Oz town here in Kansas. It's an interesting place. It was named a, after a... Potawatomi Indian chief. They have built the town around the Wizard of Oz concerning tourism. Uh, they have a museum here. I think I'm coming upon it right now. Yeah, this is it here in the green, this green building. The Wizard of Oz Museum. It is or it has the world's largest collection of Wizard of Oz artifacts. Um, the founder of Chrysler, Walter Chrysler, was born here. A lot going on in this town. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop and get out. I guess I can walk along Main Street. Beautiful neighborhood already though, right? I mean, right off the bat, one street out of downtown, that's pretty beautiful. Really nice. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to get out on Main Street and tell you more about it there. All right, I'm out on foot on Main Street, Wamego. First thing that catches your eyes is all the American flags. <laughs> they are everywhere. It's beautiful downtown. Although a little chilly out here, but every building, every storefront is occupied. You know, going to so many of these towns and half the buildings will be empty. Not here. It's a healthy downtown, some beautiful architecture. Here, let me tell you a little bit about the city. It's 4,841 people here. It's the population. Like St. Mary's before it, it has not lost population in years. It's a steadily growing small city. Um, poverty rates, 17.8, so a little bit high. Median household income is 70,600. So incomes are really good here, uh, especially for a small town. The median or the average value of homes here are 276,800. The average age of the person living here is 35.2. And uh, crime rate is low, 25% lower than the national average. Like I said, the town is built around Wizard of Oz, but there's some other things to see here too. I'm gonna try to show them all to you. I do know they have some Toto. I guess this is one here. They have little Toto statues everywhere. Of course, Toto being Dorothy's dog. I was reading about that dog once, recently, and uh, I believe Toto, the dog, has his own uh, burial site. He, he's got a tombstone and everything. I'm not sure where that is, but I would like to see it. I hope to see that someday. Anyway, I'm going to just walk along the street here a little bit. Take a look at the Wizard of Oz Museum. Like I told you earlier, it is the world's foremost museum of the Wizard of Oz. They have more artifacts there than anywhere else on Earth. There are a lot of Wizard of Oz themed businesses here right next to it. Or two doors down from it. There's Toto's. Toto's Tacos, so it's a Mexican place. Had a little play with the word taco. And then I just want to see this building here. Wow, look at this with the eagle on top. That is something to see there. That's a beauty. Now I looked up this building on the internet. It is the Columbian Theater. And yes, it is a theater. It is active. They show live theaters right now. Uh, it was built in 1893. Incredible. It's beautiful. 
I'm guessing I can't go inside though, but I'm gonna take a look. Yeah, it's locked, I can't go in there. Anyway, that is really cool. I wanted to see this building. I'm glad it did. See another Toto down there. Hmm. All right, there's some other things I wanna show you here. Check this out, it's right here on Main Street. Yellow Brick Road, Wamego, Kansas. And look, they have an actual Yellow Brick Road. We've got Toto right here, another statue. This is really nice. Let me step back a little. Yep, here we are on the Yellow Brick Road. How cool. Toto did not really care whether he was in Kansas or the land of Oz, so long as Dorothy was with him. Oh, there you go. Nice, huh? That's really cool. See, I'm right out of across the street from the museum. Oh, here's Dorothy meeting the scarecrow. <laughs> All right, we got the Tin Man, of course. The cowardly Lion is coming up. You know. You can't help but be a little impressed with this. Actually, a lot impressed. I've always wanted to walk the yellow brick road. Yay, I get to do it. How many people can say that? Nice. All right, I'm at one of the landmarks of the town. This is the Old Dutch Mill. It was built in 1879. Now let's see what this says here. Built in 1879 by a Dutch immigrant, this old mill was used to grind grain into flour and cornmeal. Wow, 1925, wagons moved the mill to Omega. Okay, each stone was taken down, numbered, and rebuilt exactly as the original. A bust of Ceres, goddess of grain, is set above the window. Interesting. Uh, so beautiful here too. I mean, look at this. Really nice, isn't it? Well, why don't I climb up there and see, see what's going on. I'm gonna do that right now. Well, here I am on the outside of it. It's locked, can't go in. Uh, let's get out here in the sun. But, um, wow, look, the They've got lights strung on the, would you call those paddles? Most likely for Christmas, but this looks pretty fantastic around Christmas time at night. Anyway, uh, yeah, really nice. Really nice, look at this. Anyway, go take a look over here. This is the Omega Museum. It's not open yet. It doesn't open till 1. It's about noon on a Tuesday. But I do know that they have a prairie town here around the museum. And it's mostly buildings from the 1830s, I believe. Early to mid 1800s, I guess, is what I'm understanding. Like a little town here. Yeah, so I got like a little house, little shops here, <laughs> Louisville County Jail. Don't want to be locked up in there. Post office, flush, cold drinks, beer. How cool, Whitechapel School, Pottawatomie County District 51. It's really nice, isn't it? I'd rather they have this little train here too. It's not running now. See the tracks. But this is a this area. I bet it's a lot of fun around Christmas time. Hmm. 
Really nice though, isn't it? Now this, this is the kind of small town setting that people leave the cities for. Quiet and beautiful. Look at that. With the fence, so nice. Yeah, it's just a really nice town. Another really nice rural Kansas town in the north. Okay, I'm a few miles outside of Womago. This is the Beecher Bible and Rifle Church. It was built in 1862. The church is named after Reverend Henry Ward Beecher. He was very anti-slavery and he would smuggle guns into this part of the country in crates marked Beecher's Bibles. Uh, the building, the site, is on the National Register. Built of this rock. You know when you build something with rock like that, it will last forever. Yeah, this is built in 1862, so what is that? About 160 years old? Wow. Um, I think it's still operating as a church. Yeah, it still is. How about that? Can you imagine going to church in a building like this, this old? I'm going to assume it's locked though and I can't go in. Anyway, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Like I said, I'm a few miles outside of uh, where may go now. Yeah, there it is. Beecher Bible Memorial Church. Awesome. All right, I'm going to head to the next town. It's much smaller town. It's called Onega. So that's coming up next. Well, everyone, I am entering the town of Onega. It's a small town. Population 679. Wasn't sure if I wanted to stop here, but it was on the way, so I thought I'd take a quick look. I dig some, or I did some digging into the town. I really couldn't find much in the way of history. It's just a little town here in rural Kansas. The poverty rate is 12.1 percent, so that's pretty good. Uh, the median household income is pretty lo uh, low, though, 41,600. The average home here is worth. 269,900. That's not bad for out here in rural Kansas. But the, the number that really sticks out, and it's why it's a good idea that I added it after some of you suggested it, is the average age. The average age here is 59.3. So that is that is definitely an older population. I would guess that there are maybe a lot of retirees here. That would explain the lower median household income too. Looks nice. I look I like the way all these buildings here look. They're very similar in architectural style too, aren't they? Is this brick rock. I bet these buildings are really old. I'm gonna go on a limb and say that. I love the light fixtures though they have everywhere. Those are cool. See see that one right there? They're all over here. It's really nice. I guess we can take a look up here. Anyway, it's a very small town, so less than 700 people. So it's got like two or three streets of residential and that's about it. Got us a church there. Uh, look at that house. That's pretty cool. Nice. I like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's another church here. Looks pretty nice. Anyway, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to head on to the next town. It's much bigger. A lot of stuff going on there. It is called Holton, so that is coming up right now.
This is a really nice street though, isn't it? Look how pretty this is. The trees, it's nice. All right, well, Holden coming up next. All right, I am driving into Holton, Kansas. Population 3,401. Well, let's take a look at the city, shall we? See what they have going on here. Looks pretty nice so far. Uh, I see they have a square downtown. Haven't really seen that much here in Kansas. So they've got a county courthouse right there in the middle. I'm going to have to t get out and take a look at that. We got some brick roads here. Pretty cool. Downtown looks nice, doesn't it? I'm not seeing any empty buildings yet. A lot of cars down here. Not a lot of people walking around, but why would they? It's cold. Uh, it's 33 degrees right now. Uh, this is nice, though. It's going to take a, a jaunt around the square. Show you all of it. But, uh, yeah, look, every storefront has a business. That's the sign of a healthy town. All right, we went all the way around. I guess I will get out. Get out on foot and take another look closer. And I will tell you about the town when I do that. Oh. I see a theater. Here, let me go up this way. Look here, that used to be a theater, but uh, oh, it's been used to something else now. Anyway, all right, let me find a place to uh, park. Okay, I'm out on foot, checking out this, or what used to be a burger joint, it looks like. Man, that's too bad that's not open. I bet that was a pretty cool little place. I'm across the street from this Arcada, that used to be a theater, you can tell. Now it looks like they sell wine, beer, now it's a liquor store. Man, I just don't know how I feel about that. I want these to stay open, but yeah, not doing that. And there's a bar here called the Cockeyed Pig Dive Bar and Grill. I am going to go in there for a beer, just for the name alone. That will be the last thing I do. But before we do that, let's go check a, take a look at this town. And I'm gonna tell you about it. Well, I'm in this square now. I wanna take a look at this old cannon here. Dedicated to the Union soldiers and sailors of the war, 1861, 1865. And it sits right here next to this imposing county courthouse. This building was built in 1921. It's a beauty. Anyway, just give you a little look-see around the downtown. It's really nice. A little bit of history here. Something called the Battle of the Spurs happened here. Now, one of the local bigger-than-life characters in this area of Kansas is a guy named John Brown. He was anti-slavery. And when I say anti-slavery, he was really anti-slavery. Oh, it's a little windy. I hope you guys can hear me. Let me get over here. Out of the wind a little. But anyway, uh, he was so anti-slavery, he uh, would not shy away from any violence whatsoever. In fact, he was very violent. He was also very religious. But he was known um, as a person who would inspire terror in his enemies. Anyway, the battle that I'm speaking of took place right here near near this town. He was taking a group of former slaves north towards Iowa. 
about 20 or so of them, and uh, he was confronted by a group of 45 U.S. Marshals. Now they wanted to capture him because he had a bounty on his head for $3,000. You know, $3,000 is a pretty good chunk of change now. You can imagine how much that was back in 1859 when this happened. So anyway, these, this group of U.S. Marshals were going to capture him, or at least they thought they were. And despite being outnumbered two to one, John Brown looked him in the eye, made it clear he was ready to fight, and that was enough. The uh, marshals turned tail and ran, not a single shot fired. So that's quite a story that happened here. <laughs> anyway, about the town, the poverty rate is 16.4. Median household income is 51300 The average home here runs 182500 And the median age is 37.9. Pretty good numbers. You can still see a little bit of snow on the ground. It's cold today, so it hasn't really melted, the little bit of snow that we got. Also, another person was born here, you may be familiar with if you're older. Uh, if you watch The Little Rascals, I certainly did as a kid. One of The Little Rascals was born and raised here. Uh, what is his name? Kendall McComas. He was the character Breezy. Yeah, I'm showing you a picture. I remember him. I used to love that show. <laughs> I still, I still get, uh, laugh when I watch that show. It's funny to this day. The yeah, Little Rascals. Kids today won't watch it. I tried to get my daughter to watch it. She did not think it was funny at all. Of course, she's in her 20s now. But anyway, all right, I'm going to look around the town a little bit, see what we can see here. Well, I'm driving out of downtown. You can see what I'm seeing. Uh, it's nice, really beautiful. Beautiful old homes, cool old brick road. Wow. One thing I've noticed about these northern rural Kansas towns is, uh, I mean, they're very healthy cities. The neighborhoods are really nice. Big, beautiful houses. Uh, you know, in suburbia, like big city suburbia, first of all, you couldn't get a house like any of these, but, or if you could, you'd have to have them specially designed and built but anyway yeah you just don't see these kind of neighborhoods unless you're out here in the country the nice big yards uh, no house or no two houses look the same that's the big thing Yeah, I'm on the other side of town now. Again, it's just more beautiful, well-established neighborhoods. Uh, still got the brick roads. And look at this one here. Wow. Well, see, now I'm driving back into downtown. All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna head over to the cockeyed pig. Because for me, I can't walk past a place with a name like that and I not at least go check it out. All right, so I'm going to do that right now. Cool little mural here on the wall. Uh, you can see the city square there, the courthouse. But uh, me, I'm going into the cockeyed pig dive bar. Right, let's go check it out. I'm gonna guess they have some Guinness in here, so I'm gonna check it out. Well, this is a cool place. I really like it. Uh, it's my kind of dive bar. Let's <laughs> give me a look around a bit. And I'll turn around and give you a look in the other direction. All right here's the place looking in the other direction. There's the bar up ahead. It smells really good. They're cooking food here. It smells awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy my beer. 
All right, well, I had my beer. They didn't have Guinness, but they did have a really delicious local IPA. Talked to the uh, owner of the place. His name's Russ. Really cool guy. Uh, so if you ever come here, it's a great bar. Anyway, uh, that's going to be the end of this video. We are going to head to rural Oklahoma next. So be looking for that.